In the last video, I talked about how we can attract helpful insects to maintain balance in our garden. These insects are important because they help keep our plants healthy, even though we often think of insects as pests. Many of them actually help our plants by preventing diseases and other pests. If you want to learn more about these beneficial insects and which ones to attract for specific pests, please watch the video titled Insects Garden Pest Solutions. I'll include the link in the description below. Today, let's continue by discussing which plants use clever strategies, like producing fragrant flowers with sweet nectar to attract these helpful insects. While some plants don't have pollen or nectar, I'll mainly focus on those that offer both. These features create a friendly environment for both plants and insects, allowing us to harness nature's power to make our garden lively and healthy. But first, let me explain what hardiness zones are. Hardiness zones are like labels for different areas based on how cold it gets there. The United States Department of Agriculture made a map to help gardeners know which plants will do well in their area. Each zone gets a number depending on how cold it usually gets in winter. Lower numbers mean colder places like Zone 1, while higher numbers are warmer like Zone 13. These zones help you pick plants that are likely to do well where you live. You can find out which zone a plant is best for by looking at its tag. Matching the zone of a plant to your area can help it grow better in your garden. Remember, while hardiness zones are helpful, other things like soil, sunlight, and water also affect how well a plant will grow. Catmint, also known as Nepeta, is a strong perennial plant in the mint family. It features small, tube-shaped flowers clustered on spikes, usually lavender blue but sometimes white, pink, or purple. These flowers attract bees, butterflies, and other pollinators and typically grow 1-2 to two feet tall and wide, although some varieties may be larger. Catmint thrives in well-drained soil and full sun to partial shade. Once it's established, it can withstand drought and adapt to different soil types. It usually hardy in zone 3 to 9. Highly appealing to pollinators, catmint also draws beneficial predatory insects like ladybugs, lacewings, and hoverflies, which help control garden pests. While it's generally resistant to diseases, it might develop powdery mildew in humid conditions, which can be prevented by ensuring good airflow and avoiding overhead watering. Once catmint is established, it needs minimal care, water it during dry spells, especially in the first year, and remove spent flowers to encourage more blooms. Catmint is a low-maintenance yet beneficial addition to any garden. Asters are popular perennial plants with daisy-like flowers that bloom in late summer and fall. These flowers have a yellow center surrounded by colorful petals in shades of white, pink, purple, blue, and more. They grow in clusters on tall stems ranging from 1 to 6 feet in height and width. They prefer full sun to partial shade and moist, well-drained soil. They typically bloom from late August to October, but this can vary depending on the species, cultivar, climate, and growing conditions. Some varieties may start blooming earlier in the summer, while others may continue blooming into early winter in milder climates. They are hardy in zones 3 to 9. Depending on the variety, they attract beneficial predatory insects like ladybugs, lacewings, hoverflies, and parasitic wasps which help control pests like aphids and caterpillars. However, they can be prone to diseases such as powdery mildew, aster yellows, leaf spot, and stem rot. Good air circulation, avoiding overhead watering, and planting resistant varieties can prevent these issues. 
Asters are low maintenance plants. They should be watered regularly during dry spells, especially in the first year. Removing spent flowers can extend blooming, and dividing clumps every few years can rejuvenate older plants. Coreopsis, also called tick seed, is a lively plant that comes back year after year. Its flowers are shaped like daisies and come in bright colors like yellow, gold, orange, pink, and red. They are delicate and usually about 1 to 2 inches wide. These flowers bloom from late spring until early fall, depending on the type. They can grow to be 1 to 3 feet tall and wide. Coreopsis likes sunny spots with soil that drains well. Once it starts growing, it doesn't need much water, and it can handle different kinds of weather from zones 4 to 9. The flowers attract helpful bugs like ladybugs, lacewings, hoverflies, and parasitic wasps, which keep pests away. While Coreopsis is generally resistant to diseases, it may encounter issues like powdery mildew or leaf spot in humid or poorly drained conditions. With minimal care, including a regular watering and deadheading spent flowers, Coreopsis remains vibrant and requires little maintenance. It's an excellent choice for gardeners seeking reliable, colorful perennials for sunny areas. Goldenrod, also known as Solidago, is a North American plant with tall stems and bright yellow flowers. These flowers grow in clusters that look like feathers and bloom from late summer to early fall. They grow between 1 to 6 feet tall and prefer sunny, well-drained soil but can adapt to various soil types. Goldenrod attracts bees, butterflies, and other beneficial insects for pollination while also providing a habitat for beneficial predatory insects like ladybugs, lacewings, and predatory wasps. It's resistant to pests and diseases but may suffer from mildew or rust in unfavorable conditions. Once established, goldenrod requires minimal maintenance, only occasional watering during dry spells, deadheading or cutting off spent flowers can extend the blooming period, but leaving some seed heads can attract birds. Goldenrod adds vibrant color to late season gardens and supports a diverse ecosystem of helpful insects. Yarrow also known as Achillea millifolium, is a perennial plant with soft feathery leaves and clusters of small flowers that look like daisies. The flowers are tightly grouped together in flat clusters called umbels and come in different colors such as white, yellow, pink, or red depending on the yarrow type. It usually blooms from late spring to early summer, but some varieties can flower into the fall. Yarrow plants typically grow between 1 to 3 feet tall and spread about 1 to 2 feet wide. It can adapt to various climates and thrives in hardiness zones 3 to 9. Yarrow attracts beneficial insects like ladybugs, lacewings, hoverflies, and parasitic wasps. It's generally resistant to diseases but it might develop powdery mildew or rust in humid conditions. This easy care plant prefers well-drained soil and full sunlight. Once established, it's drought tolerant and doesn't need much fertilizer. Removing spent flowers can encourage more blooms and prevent self seeding as yarrow can spread quickly in some areas. Dividing clumps every few years helps maintain plant health and encourages new growth. Thyme is an herb known for its fragrant leaves and small flowers. These flowers come in different colors like white, pink, lavender, or purple, and bloom from late spring to early summer. These plants are usually between 6 to 12 inches tall and spread about 12 to 18 inches wide. It's good for hardiness zones 4 to 9, depending on the type. It can handle different temperatures, but in very cold areas, it might need extra protection. Thyme attracts bees and butterflies that pollinate plants in the garden. Additionally, it draws beneficial predatory insects such as ladybugs, butterflies, and parasitic wasps, which help control pests in our garden. It's tough against pests and diseases but can suffer from root rot or mildew if the soil is too wet. 
Once it's established, thyme needs little care. It prefers less water and benefits from trimming back old flowers to keep it growing nicely. Dividing the plant every few years can keep it healthy. Thyme is a great herb that's easy to grow and makes your garden smell nice while adding some color too. Basil's flowers have sweet nectar and pollen, attracting bees that help pollinate other plants. Predatory wasps are also drawn to basil for both nectar and pests like aphids and caterpillars. Ladybugs, which eat aphids, are also attracted to basil scent. Dill's flowers provide sweet nectar and pollen, attracting beneficial insects like ladybugs and lacewings. Ladybugs and lacewing larvae feed on pests such as aphids and caterpillars. The strong scent of dill leaves can also attract parasitic wasps which lay eggs on garden pests. Fennel's flowers have sweet nectar and pollen, attracting helpful insects like ladybugs, hoverflies, and parasitic wasps. Ladybugs and hoverflies are attracted by fennel's nectar, while the scent of its leaves can draw in parasitic wasps. Parsley's flowers offer nectar and pollen, attracting beneficial insects like hoverflies and parasitic wasps. Hoverflies are drawn to the nectar, while parasitic wasps are attracted by the nectar and scent of parsley leaves. Coriander's flowers have nectar and pollen, attracting helpful insects like hoverflies and lacewings. Hoverflies are drawn to the nectar, while lacewings are attracted by both nectar and the scent of coriander leaves. Coriander is also known as cilantro. Next video is about annual flowers known for producing plenty of pollen and nectar and which beneficial pollinators and predatory insects they attract. Please join me again for part 3 of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, like, and feel free to share this video with your friends. Your comments would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to click the notification bell to stay updated for new videos. Again, thank you and see you next time. Happy gardening!